The universe is full of amazing contrasts. Most of the cosmic expanses are cold, lifeless vacuum. Paradoxically, it contains clusters of surprisingly hot material that we call stars. For billions of years, they have illuminated the bottomless depths of space. However, when a star approaches the last cycle of its life, space is illuminated by an incredibly strong flash. A giant star suddenly shrinks to a thousandth of its original size, only to destroy all the stars in a few moments. As a result of a strong explosion, a shock wave with a force beyond our imagination tears the star apart, and when its volume is blown away and disappears, the only thing that remains around are clumps of incandescent gas. And where a star has just been, there remains only a tiny object consisting of exceptionally dense material with strange and extraordinary properties. That's how stars die instantly and brutally. But what if it happens relatively close to us? What should we expect from this event and whether we can survive it? We are talking about the red supergiant Betelgeuse, whose life cycle is coming to an end. Greetings to everyone on the Space Stop channel. Before you start watching, I ask you to like this video and subscribe to the channel. We appreciate your support, because every video is a lot of work. I wish you a pleasant viewing. One of the most anticipated astronomical events is the Betelgeuse supernova, which is located in the constellation Orion. Betelgeuse is a red supergiant star whose lifetime is coming to an end. Betelgeuse is one of the brightest stars in the night sky, but it mysteriously began to fade in the second half of the 2019th year. See, the dimming with the naked eye was so obvious that within a few months the brightness of the star decreased by more than 30%, and observers wondered if Betelgeuse had reached the end of his life. A few months later, at the beginning of the 2020th year, the brightness of the star returned to normal. Astronomers were amazed to find signs of a great blackout when they focused several of the most powerful telescopes on it. This star is on the verge of exploding, nearing the end of its existence. When and why is the occurrence of a supernova predicted, and will this situation be catastrophic for humanity? Let's find out. Some scientists are talking about an upcoming supernova, which will become the brightest object in the night sky. It is alarming that the stream of gamma radiation emitted by the explosion is considered potentially dangerous for life on our planet. In April of the 2020th year, astronomers assure the general public that Betelgeuse has restored its luminosity to a standard value. It can still go supernova at any moment, but there is no way to predict this event with any degree of certainty. Assumptions are made about the causes of such abnormal attenuation. According to the most popular hypothesis, this was caused by a giant cloud of gas and dust ejected by Betelgeuse in the direction of the Sun quite recently. In July 2021st year, the assumption is confirmed by data from ground-based telescopes. Astronomers continue to observe the object, while astrophysicists simulate the processes taking place in its depths. Before we try to figure out what was going on, it would be nice to know what Betelgeuse looks like. This object belongs to the category of red supergiants and is at the final stage of its life cycle. According to the modern theory of stellar evolution, because its brightness and radius are constantly changing, its outer layers are extremely unstable. The star regularly throws millions of tons of incandescent gas into space, and this forms giant prominences. As they cool down, they contribute to the gas nebula surrounding Betelgeuse. The mass of the star is about 17 times the mass of the Sun, and its diameter has so far been measured only about 880 times that of the Sun. Hypothetically, if Betelgeuse were placed in the center of our system, it would devour all the planets up to Mars, as well as most of the asteroid belt. Betelgeuse is a surprisingly bright star. Its minimum luminosity is 100,000 times higher than that of the Sun. Interestingly, given this, the temperature of the star is not so great. It is approximately 4,000 degrees Celsius. For example, the surface temperature of our sun is 5.5 thousand degrees Celsius. 
barely predictable processes take place in the unstable outer layers of the star. They are able to skillfully change the brightness of an object. The main pulsation period of the star is approximately 420 days, but it is possible to distinguish less distinct cycles with longer and shorter periods. In addition, and predictable flashes and dimming of the star can be observed from time to time. Because this star is so unstable, it is extremely difficult to calculate the distance between us. According to estimates, the distance between the Sun and Betelgeuse is 650 light years. According to modern ideas about the evolution of stars, Betelgeuse should have been formed about eight and a half million years ago, and its initial mass would not have exceeded 20 solar masses. The life expectancy of massive stars like Betelgeuse is a measly few million years, while red dwarfs remain active for billions of years. In any case, more than 200% of a star's life takes place at the main sequence stage. Gradually accumulating, helium is attracted to the center of the object, forming a helium core. What happens to this star next depends almost entirely on its mass. For example, stars with a mass of no more than 20% of the mass of the Sun do not become supernovae at the end of their existence unlike more massive stars. Eventually, having used up almost all of their hydrogen, they slowly turn into blue dwarfs hot and relatively small astronomical objects. However, the minimum time required to complete this transformation is about 1 trillion years, which is 72 times the estimated age of the universe. After the hydrogen reserves run out, the thermonuclear reactions in the star will stop, and it will turn into a white dwarf consisting of helium. Trillions of years of slow fading and cooling are ahead, until instead there will be a lukewarm black dwarf that is barely visible in telescopes. If the mass of an object is in the range of up to eight solar masses, its evolution goes through more complex processes. Helium, which is formed as a result of thermonuclear reactions, is added to the core of the star, while gravitational forces compress it and heat it more and more. At a certain moment, a fusion reaction of helium nuclei occurs, as a result of which carbon is formed. The star begins to expand, its radius also grows, and the temperature of the outer layers drops. In this case, the object turns into a red giant or subgiant. Eventually, the star sheds its outer layers, and what remains is a white dwarf shrouded in a planetary nebula. As for the evolution of massive objects, they have their own laws. The heavier the star, the more massive its core. With the mass of a star eight or more times the mass of the sun, its core can exceed the mass of the Sun. In this case, the forces of internal electromagnetic repulsion are not strong enough to compensate for the gravitational compression. The core takes a few seconds to shrink, dragging the outer layers with it. Exceptionally powerful compression heats the core to temperatures of hundreds of millions of degrees Celsius. After a few seconds, the neutrons break away from the collapsing star and evaporate, taking with them a certain amount of thermal energy. As a result, the star is experiencing extremely powerful internal pressure. As a result, an extremely powerful explosion occurs, which is able to throw the outer layers of the star over huge distances. Its flame can cause reactions that are impossible anywhere else. This is how heavy elements such as gold, lead or uranium are formed. The nebula formed as a byproduct gradually cools and dissipates, forming separate clouds, which are later compressed by the forces of gravity and turn into new stars and planets. Where the star was, there remains a tiny but extremely heavy object called a neutron star. If the mass of the original star was more than 20 times the mass of the sun, then during the explosion it is assumed that its core is compressed forming a black hole a bizarre object that distorts time and space around itself. Mathematical modeling shows that especially large stars with masses more than a hundred times the mass of the Sun, hypothetically, they can be completely destroyed by an explosion. In this case, all the material they consist of will be scattered by the shock wave for many light years around or converted into extremely powerful electromagnetic radiation.
An electromagnetic pulse from a supernova can travel a distance of hundreds of light years. At first, radiation is characterized by an incredible force that destroys all living things in its path. However, as the distance traveled increases, the density of the flow decreases, and the deadly rays gradually dissipate in space. Estimates show that a star like Betelgeuse could pose a threat to anything within a radius of up to 100 light years. It is absolutely impossible to say when this star will turn into a supernova, but it will probably happen in the next 100,000 years. According to some estimates, Betelgeuse can flare up as bright as the full moon. A dying star will remain the dominant object in our night sky for a while, and then gradually fade away. The object will no longer be visible to the naked eye, and only the most powerful telescopes will be able to distinguish the radiation emitted by the tiny neutron star. In any case, there is no threat to the Earth. Betelgeuse is too far from the solar system, and the gamma ray flare that will accompany the supernova will not cause us any harm. The material ejected by the explosion will reach the vicinity of our system only in 6 million years. In addition, it will be suppressed by the solar wind before it reaches the inner regions of the system. Despite all the achievements of modern science, the dark depths of the boundless cosmos are still fraught with many secrets and dangers. That's why people continue to study the sky as diligently as they did thousands of years ago, in search of answers to their question. And the gloomy boundless abyss of interstellar space is as frightening as it attracts. Who knows maybe at some point it will answer a really important question.